Our final session for the entire conference is a fireside chat with Carrie Shada, founder and principal research scientist at North Mountain Consulting Group, and Kaylee Rossage, sustainability reporter for Women's Wear Daily. And this fireside chat will explore what consumers really want when it comes next to next gen materials. Um, and I'll, I'll hand it over to both of you to, to introduce yourselves. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, thanks for sticking around. I didn't realize this was the last session, but it makes sense though, right? 7.30 um, Eastern. Um, so thanks for, thanks for sticking with us. Um, we're excited about this. Carrie, great to see you again. Likewise, Kaylee, looking forward to this, yeah. Um, so uh, just to lay the kind of context, um, you know, uh, Carrie's firm has done um, so much, um, so much research behind um, why consumers are interested in next-gen materials, alternative proteins, uh, not just in uh, fashion, um, food, um, across the board, um, every industry. Um, so I'm really excited to talk to you um, about what's happening. And uh, I'd like to start with your work, um, again, founding this, this consulting firm. Um, you know, how did you find yourself in this alternative protein landscape? Yeah, thanks for asking. It's kind of like a pathway where you keep moving from one thing to the next that leads you to it, you know. Um, but I've always been really interested in issues that are, you know, have multi stakeholders and uh, go across multiple issues. So we talk about like health and the environment and animal welfare and social justice too, they are often so intertwined. So that's kind of been a theme for me um, throughout my work. Um, I started off researching dietary behavior change and working on uh, messages to reduce meat consumption. Uh, and then and then went on to do science communication work, which was really fun and uh, really started working in the food tech space there. And um, yeah, and then I, I actually met Nicole at the Good Food Institute. So I was a research scientist there uh, and did a lot of research in plant-based and cultivated meat. Um, and then, you know, like many of us in the pandemic, you know, we took new paths, I suppose. And um, I founded a consulting firm then spring 2020. And I'm still doing the same stuff, you know, doing uh, science communication work um, and also consumer research. And it's been in the um, food sector, in alternative protein, and then also in next-gen materials. So both topics that are, you know, spanning these issues that affect so many things at the same time. And materials touches everything, so that's um, yeah. certainly relevant. Um, and maybe we could start with, you know, some of the factors, um, you know, sifting through all of those reports. Um, there's a lot of themes and commonalities behind uh, what's driving adoption um, uh, among consumers. Um, I'd love if we could talk about those those three core factors that are really uh, that's really driving this um, this push. Okay, sure. Yeah, it. I mean, what people say is motivating to them are the things that really differentiate next gen products from conventional products. So, you know, as you expect, it's like the, you know, the environment, um, you know, and animal welfare. Um, and people are also really interested in like the quality or performance aspect of it or the potential for it. Um, so those are the, the biggest drivers. But um, honestly, when we see, you know, like adoption of these new products, the barriers are uh, more important than the, you know, the drivers, right? So there's most people like, you know, are happy to be contributing to sustainability and animal welfare. Um, and the early adopters are, you know, especially those aspects are especially important to them, but they're also willing to accept some compromise. Um, so those very, you know, as we think about long-term adoption, um, making sure that products are actually quality, that, you know, the price is going to be um, affordable to them or if it meets, you know, style standpoint, things like that are going to be, yeah, key, I think. Absolutely. And I think um, certainly in the sustainability reporting um, landscape, you know, you see, you see so many of those um, reports, it's like consumers would buy um, X product, um, you know, it, because it's sustainable. Um, but then, as you mentioned, that price factor is so, so, so crucial. Um, even in adoption of resale, it's like, you know, price still leads, um, you know, what's affordable, um, you know, and hopefully you'll see, you know, see that drop down as the more, um, 
you know, more push, more innovation, uh, more funding, which um, speaking of funding, um, I know that um, you probably talked about um, earlier in, in today's sessions, um, the $2.3 billion um, investment in um, next gen materials since 2015. We'll talk about that. Um, I think I think what's important about that though is you know talking about consumer um, acceleration, uh, brand acceleration. Um, but I'd love if we could kind of take you know four steps back and talk about how we talk about this, how we report on it, how we speak on it. Um, and you mentioned a good report on the the kind of nomenclature, the vocab behind um, next gen materials. Um, you know, should we even be saying vegan leather? I think this is a, a great question, a great actionable question we can talk about. Sure. Yeah. Nomenclature is always fun. It's definitely one of those like multi-stakeholder uh, topics, right? Um, there's lots of, you know, opinions on that. And what I've found, so I've done like nomenclature work in alternative protein too. Um, what I found consistently is it just really depends on what your criteria are or like what you really care about in nomenclature. Like, so because there's no perfect term that, you know, is meets every single thing in every single um, context. Um, so yeah, I guess with um, like vegan, you said like with vegan letter, I mean, yeah, there are some contexts where that's going to make sense. It has some familiarity aspects to it. I can say from like a research standpoint that people don't prefer it if you're not, if you're looking at like general population or even like early adopt people who are enthusiastic about it, but not yet purchasing. Um, it's not a preferred term. So it's uh, very few or people are selecting it as a term. Um, you know, so it, it just depends on what, yeah, I guess what the needs are. Um, when we do the research, um, so I'm looking at it from consumer standpoint, there's certainly other factors, but I'm looking at, is it appealing? Is it differentiating or like understandable? Um, and is it just like, preferable one thing, what, the, what would they would choose? Um, so those are the factors that we look at. Um, and so um, we did a, well, let's see, about three studies leading up to, um, you know, the, our final nomenclature work. Um, I partnered with MII on this. Um, we got funding to, to do this research. And um, so NextGen rose to the top. That's why we're using it. Um, it was the most preferred term. Um, there were also animal free and um, eco uh, materials were also um, well received. Um, they had some challenges with like really truly dif differentiating, right? Because there's other products that are sustainable or maybe other products that are um, animal free. So uh, yeah, so that's how we landed on um, next gen. Uh, it's just looking at how yeah, consumers see it. That's interesting about eco being like kind of, you know, uh, getting a green thumbs up because I think, you know, you're just seeing, um, at least in the US, FTC cracking down on on um, retailers and how they label um, products. Um, we certainly um, know that that's important as far as, consu uh, you know, communicating with the consumer. So I think it's interesting also um, that, you know, vegan leather didn't even, didn't even rank that highly, you know, um, leather alternatives, next gen materials. Got it. Um, and mm -hmm. so talking about next gen materials, um, you know, uh, I feel like mycelium has been the dominant, um, you know, dominant front runner there. Um, you know, we also see fermentation processes, things like that. Um, we can get in on that. But, um, you know, I'd love to think uh, and, and ask your, you know, no, I'd love to start with this. How about this? Okay. Um, this so much, yes. Yes. I'm like, we can get, we can go in the, in the weeds on, on mycelium, mushroom root, all of that. Um, but I think it's really interesting because you're the consumer expert here, um, to talk about your process, right? I think, um, there was a time when we wouldn't even, you know, delve into these conversations and now it's so, so, um, so, um, proven with the, the consumer research, um, from yourself and others. Um, you know, what excites you about this type of, uh, of research and how do you maintain objectivity um, in the in the realm of animal ethics? Yeah, so what it, yeah, what excites me is um, the consistency. <laughs> so I've had like, just been really privileged to be able to do a lot of research on these topics and globally. And so, you know, after several years, when you just stop 
seeing new stuff, right? Like, I just, it's like the same things. Consumers are consistent and not just, you know, like in the U.S. It's really like I've you know, done research in most continents and it's, people are still very um, open to, I would say, you know, like an alternative protein and next gen materials too. Um, so that's kind of cool, uh, right? You know, that it's like, it's hopeful. Um, but, you know, I think it's the same thing. It's like, hope, I guess, but then we have to have products that actually match it, right? Because when we do the studies, we um, really describe them conceptually, right? Like, like this, you know, assuming it's, you know, affordable and assuming it, you know, is more sustainable and, you know, all those things. So um, it's more like, um, you know, ideally people are really on board. And so um, I think that just shows the potential of it. So that's exciting. Yeah. Yeah, um, and what was the what was the second question? Um, yeah, I know. Oh, I lo I was just going to echo that and say I love what you're saying. Um, the you know how do you maintain objectivity, right? And in this kind of um, previously kind of dodgy area of animal ethics. Yeah, um, I'd love to know. I guess what do you mean by the like previously dodgy area? I'd love to know more. Yeah, tell me what you mean by at yeah. Least, at at least in fashion history, right? I think, um, you know, there were, there'd be points where it's like, um, you know, you don't speak out on these things, you don't speak on this. Um, you know, finally, there's much more transparency in supply chain. Um, there's much more, um, I guess, uh, broadening of the definition of what sustainability means, right? Of like, you know, gender equality, um, access to clean water, there's so many elements. So I think, um, you know, with something like animal ethics, I think um, before, uh, even when I was trying to report on it early days, it's like, oh, we don't want to speak on that. Um, and it was interesting, but now you see all these brands um, in, in fashion, it's like, you know, Gucci ends, ends for so-and-so ends, ends um, you know, leather. Um, and just seeing a slew of, of brand collaborations. Um, so, you know, what does it look like? Again, this kind of goes back to your, your, your thesis on what kind of research you do, um, you know, sticking to the facts, sticking to the, the evidence. Um, so I'm just wondering if you can kind of walk us through that a bit. Sure. Yeah. I, I guess I asked the question because I don't, um, you know, it's, I guess it's not something I've thought about a lot because I'm like, my job is to be a researcher. Right. And so like what we do is find answers to questions. And so uh, it's not like, um, you know, I don't know, a challenge to ask people, like say what other people are saying, right? <laughs> you know, like we want to know uh, these things. Um, so it, you know, and I guess there's the aspect of uh, I'm like objective researcher, but yet I also care about these issues, right? Um, but ultimately, uh, you know, it would be a disservice if if we weren't asking these questions objectively, right? So what's helpful is to find information, like to find, you know, truth. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, talking about next gen materials, um, maybe we will get a little bit in the weeds. Um, so let's talk about some of the, you know, the excitement behind, um, you mentioned, again, ultimately the product has to work. Um, the substitute has to be um, better than the original or comparative. Um, so um, in that in that strain, um, you know, what are we seeing as far as the next gen categories um, is it still mycelium, the game, um, you know, leather alternatives or, um, you know, what other kind of, you know, questions are you asking um, consumers that are, that would be important to, to share with the, the viewers? Sure. Yeah. So, and I'll just speak to what's in the, I guess, what we've studied. Um, so uh, rather than, I guess, what's being sold there, but um, so we asked about all six categories um, of like animal replacements that MII uses. Um, and like another thing that's really i see consistently too that's helpful is like that it's not just people are open to buying but they're really open to um or imagine themselves buying it all the time honestly so we ask a question to like use a futures approach and say you know in yeah in the future imagine yourself a world in which like all these products are available if we're talking about like um silk, for example, you can buy next gen silk, you can buy like, um, you know, conventional silk, you can buy none, right? What would you buy? And how much of it would you buy? And let me ask about all these categories, it's like people envision, you know, at least half of their consumption um, 
to be next gen like material, whether, you know, no matter what kind of product, um, if they're buying that product already, right? Like some people wouldn't buy down whether it was like next gen or real or not. But yeah, so that's kind of cool that people are open to all of it, really. Um, and touching on kind of, you know, uh, the scale, I think uh, everywhere, um, you know, we talk about innovation, we want to talk about scale um, and kind of balance uh, expectations versus reality. Um, and knowing that next gen materials uh, today can replace uh, or substitute maybe 1% of, of the existing market. Um, what are your thoughts on on that, on, you know, existing industry, existing materials, um, you know, um, and I'll use a comparison of, you know, when you report on or when I report on resale, it's like, oh, no, um, you know, fast fashion, all these categories, um, they're all still existing. It's just who's taking more market share. Um, so with that being said, um, you know, as next gen materials, um, very, very small amount today, um, you know, what, how does it affect existing industry? Yeah. Um, well, I see, I, I guess I'll speak more to like the food side of things. You, you see a lot of investment, but um, it's more just like a diversification of, um, you know, of their offerings, um, right, to kind of match the current trajectory um, there, you know. So, I mean, I think it just matches like, yeah, what's what they think will happen in the near future. Um, but yeah, I think like if there's if there's a, I don't know, I, I, I'd like to see more, right, to try to get like a breakthrough product, breakthrough products, right, that really, really meet all these things that we are hoping for. Um, and that this is the sort of thing that I think will like be able to skyrocket demand um, or like, I don't know, in some ways there's already the demand there, but like, you know, supply a product that people want. Um, so, yeah, in that case, I don't know that there's it's like matching that potential. Um, and as you mentioned, you know, diversification, um, it, it kind of points me back to, I think I was speaking to another researcher um, on the MII report. And, you know, I asked the question of like, you know, what defines a good brand partner? And it was kind of that it was, you know, really experimenting across the board, trying a lot of different things, um, diversifying their materials, um, you know, leaning into um, and reducing their uh, plastic, um, so synthetic um, polyester uh, reliance. Um, so it's nice to hear that kind of echoed um, across the board. Um, I want to make sure we're, we're tracking well on time because um, I'm sure we have a lot of questions and I'm sure, again, end of day, um, yeah. we want to get them while we have them. Yeah, <laughs> so, no worries. Yeah. So um, be, you know, be j uh, jotting down your questions um, and yeah, and we'll kind of Spiral. Yeah. Is there anything else you wanted to cover? Because yeah. I feel like, well, can I ask you a question? <laughs> yeah, I knew you were going to try to flip in there. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Yeah. 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 So one thing I was thinking about before this is like, so I think about the food industry, especially in like the cultivated meat side. Like, if I were to, you know, like what what keeps me up at night, right? It's it's like there'd be a food safety scare <laughs> with the new thing, right? Because that can like just, you know, derail. Um, consumer trust so quickly with a new thing. But I couldn't think of a similar, like, what's the parallel in materials? And I was curious if you have one of like, what, yeah, what's the thing that we not, you know, we are building towards something, right? But what's the thing we have to avoid? <laughs> oh, that's, um, that's tricky. So, yeah, I couldn't think of it. I'm like, maybe, you know, yeah. Wait, so what was your food example? It was something that just like a food safety scare. Wrong. Yeah, it's... like a food can, you know, like a food recall, right? Like, of course, there's tons of food recalls now already in the meat industry, but it would make be a bigger deal with a very new technology. Oh, that's hard. I know that um, from, you know, the press side of things, you only get the good press releases, right? You don't hear about any of the bad trials or, or things okay, that yeah. went horribly wrong. Um, so... <sighs> I have to do more digging if anyone has any insight. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I, I'd imagine there's, I mean, there's what, seven to 10 years just to get a lot of these um, innovations even in front of a brand. And then, you know, then you have an, a year um, or two just to get a product to market. So um, you really don't see anything unless it's kind of like, yeah. You know. Yeah. It's kind of like nice, right? <laughs> there's, um, 
like, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd be curious whether people have some things to add maybe in the chat about that, uh, think, right? But there's I, also not like this great, cute, like in food too, like the taste barrier is so huge, right? Yeah. Um, and you have like the health or like, yeah, health concern issue too. Like, I don't know what the parallels are. Maybe that's, there's not, there's, that's great. <laughs> No, I think as you're, as it's jogging, my memory is being drawn. You have to forgive me. It's end of day. Um, no, yeah. Um, and I think what's what's coming to mind is that, you know, the hidden synthetics, right? The hidden um, plastics mm -hmm. and binders, um, you know, so whereas, you know, a material uh, innovator will say, you know, no plastic, but then, you know, tests, independent tests will be done. And it's like, oh, actually, this was found here. Um, there's a big PFA chase down right now. Um, and so I think there's a lot of, um, you know, uh, clarity and detail always needed um, on the testing. All right, so we'll get to the questions now. We're just <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, Thank so, you. Um, okay, the first one I'm seeing here. There's quite a few. Um, so the first question: Any surprising metrics about the consumer who is interested in next gen materials? You know, what stuck out to you? Yeah, I think that's a, like kind of goes back to the thing. It's like it's so amazingly consistent. <laughs> yeah, that people are. I, I I really haven't seen like a oh my gosh, this is totally different in the next gen material space kind of thing. Yeah, um, it, it, I mean the numbers are higher like in compared to food. Like the acceptance levels are higher, right? Like if we talk about China, for example. Like we did a study in altern um, I think like alternative leather, next gen leather. Um, you know, like it was 90% of the consumers who were like, said they were very extremely likely to buy next gen leather. And it's a conceptual product, but like, whoa, it's huge, right? P pe people are like cool with it. Um, and in the US it was 70%. So that's super high. Fascinating stuff. And it, you're, you're right, it really does track uh, pretty consistently. Um, another one, oh, let's see. Um, do, do, do. Oh, this is a great question off of your question. Um, is durability a concern for consumers? I often hear the tension between sustainability through longevity and durability versus sustainability through material sources and emissions. Yeah, I, I, it's an interesting question, right? Like what people, I think it's going to depend on the segment about what people are the most interested in, right? Because there's going to be some consumers who really want the durability most, right? Um, and maybe they have plans for it for like long-term use. And then, um, you know, others are more interested in like the, maybe the environmental side of it. And wanna, I don't know. Yeah. Durability is also environmental because you don't have to replace it. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's complicated. No, I, I, I hear that. I think that's kind of, um, uh, you know, the, what are the metrics? There's a lot more accounting happening. Um, so be it like a, you know, a firm that's looking at, as you said, the durability, um, you know, how many, this is three wares for this garment. Um, and I think that's really interesting too, about how um, companies are, are looking at that and, and um, obviously take backs. Um, there's more programs and infrastructure kind of surrounding that. Um, good question. Um, to do, do, um, do, do, do. Oh, um, this one's more of a broad question, but Hey, we'll take it. Are consumers buying less fast fashion or buying less? I don't know the answer. Yeah. Yeah. So um, the research that we've done is like purely on the, you know, next, next gen materials and acceptance of that. So it would be outside my knowledge. But you might know the answer. <laughs> I, I've all the data just swirling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll send you an article link. Um, yeah. I don't want to speak out of term. Um, let's see more commentary. And then we have another question. Um, is the consumer trained to expect a certain level of a shorter lifespan to some degree at a certain price point, of course? Yeah. Um, I don't know the answer. To, I mean, like, I don't know the research answer to that. It seems to make sense, right? <laughs> that we expect it from some things and not others. Great. Um, do, 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 um, that's funny. Um, any specific demographic that are most interested in next gen materials? Sure. Yeah. So um, the interesting thing about this is that the answer is not really. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, like when you're doing this research, you're like, I want to do, I do all these segmentation studies. Right. And then I like parse out the early adopters and then like 
they're kind of the same, you know? <laughs> so it's like, oh, it's, it's a little like, there's not much to report on, right? But um, but it's also good in, in the sense of there's just so many people who are, that the interest is so, um, you know, like across the board. So like sociodemographics is not the best predictor of acceptance at all. Um, there are some like teensy tendencies. Like I hate to say them because it's not, a, you know, it's just not like a strong tendency, but there are um, like jet millennials and Gen X tend to be a little bit higher of interest. Um, let's see, of like higher, slightly higher income, education, liberal, like those are some, yeah, again, small tendencies, but not really meaningful rates. Yeah. So it's not going to be like, in my mind, the sociodemographics, it's going to mean who's going <laughs> to, I guess, yeah, who's going to buy. We're tired of Gen Z leading everything. No, I'm just kidding. Um, uh, yeah, no, I don't find that actually. I mean, they're close, um, and I've seen that in food too. Um, you know, like people a lot of talk about Gen Z leading it, but I, I've not found it to be that way. I don't know that it has to do with younger generation. It may just be an effect of age, right? Like if we asked if. Gen Z were not, uh, were not 18 to 24 in my surveys, right? If they were the same people, but older, um, maybe they would be interested, more interested. And we don't know that answer. Great. Um, and we'll uh, squeeze in that one last question from Nicole. Um, based on your research, can you estimate the market share for next-gen products? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, uh, again, if we're thinking like conceptually, like we have this awesome product, people can afford it and, and so on. Um, among the people who would buy any sort of, you know, next gen product with, or next gen or conventional project, the rates range from, it's like anywhere from half to two thirds of the population. Yeah. So it's pretty high in terms of, uh, uh, sorry, that's not uh, the population, half to two thirds of the purchasing Right. So people estimate like half the amount of like leather I'm going to buy would be next gen or, you know, like 60 percent of the silk would be next gen or so on. Yeah. Um, those aren't exact numbers, but that range in the half to two thirds of the total um, amount sold is what people say they would like to buy. Great. Um and I want to be cognizant of everyone's time. Thank you so much for your questions and for your commentary and for um, your um, perspective, Carrie. Um, uh, really enjoyed this. And thank you, Nicole, for having us. Oh, no. Thank you both so much. I think it was such a, a positive note to end on. Um, in case anyone didn't quite get what Carrie just said, sorry, I know it was kind of like setting it up with that question. But for the consumers that you talk to, they think over half of the market share for something like leather would be next gen. Am I saying that correctly? Yeah. Yeah. Of like the total, they say like that they're total purchasing over the course of a year. They I think on average, yeah, you know, over half. So huge, huge market share. And you can see more of those specifics and, you know, Carrie's actually research in uh, the link I put in the in the chat a while ago. So thank you both so much. And we are at the end of the conference. I'm going to invite um, Stephanie Downs onto the stage to close this out with me. Hi, Stephanie. Hey, I love that we did this last year and we'll end it again today, this year. <laughs> I know. So just because my team's worried about me forgetting, I'm going to talk about logistics first. And then Stephanie and I thought we'd, we'd pull out some themes that we've heard throughout the conference for everyone. So number one, um, we are going to email a post-event survey to all attendees. I know I get surveys all the time. They drive me nuts. Um, you always wonder if people read them or not. We really, really do. And we really want your opinions. And part of that survey is we're actually going to ask for next year, do you want in-person conference or virtual or hybrid? And where should we do it in the world if we do in person? Um, we're throwing out San Francisco, New York, Europe. So um, you have an opportunity to help shape the future of next year. And then we really do want some insight into what panels you liked at the conference. What did we miss? What can we do to improve for next year? So we are here to support the industry. And we can only do that so much to the extent that, that we hear from you on what would be useful. 
And then please, I hope you enjoyed the conference. Um, please come next year. Um, it will be even better, I promise. Um, and stay tuned for more information about that. Um, if you haven't signed up for our newsletter already, please do. We only send out newsletters once a month. And we will be sending out more information about the conference in our newsletter. And then I hope everyone heard that Ranjani mentioned our environmental data scientists, environmental data science coalition, where, as everyone knows, sustainability is complicated. There's, there's a lot that we need to tackle in this industry. Unfortunately, there is greenwashing in the fashion industry. And I think all of us here really want to make sure that we're making the right decisions um, when we move into next gen materials. And so we want the coalition to come together and really help set those parameters for the analysis and be the leaders in, in the space and how we think about this. So, and Rona, uh, Cole, if I could follow up on that real quick, yeah. um, if people are interested in getting involved, should they email Ranjani, Sydney? Yeah, feel free for right now. Um, email anybody on the MII team. We're not we're not that big. Um, and or you could even email our info at materialinnovation.org. Um, but we are, we'll see how quickly we can do it. I, I'm going to give the whole MII team tomorrow off because it's been a crazy <laughs> week. But we're going to um, post some information on our website next week. And that's kind of open to everybody, you know, and that's, you know, that this is really the first coalition that we've announced, you know, to, to date, it, you know, we've had the, the MII team has really been building the the ecosystem and connecting investors and brands and, and different people. But now we're going to try and put this entity together that can enable the industry to kind of work together on, mm -hmm. on a critical issue. So very cool. And we saw so much <laughs> collaboration. I mean, that's, yes. yeah, maybe I'll take the first theme of the <laughs> conference. I mean, collaboration works. We need it. Um, and that's, that's part of our idea with this, with this coalition. Yeah. Was yeah. there anything that stood out to you? Yeah. I mean, definitely innovation takes time. I feel like we heard that a lot today, which is as somebody who has come from the entrepreneur side, um, I think, you know, definitely be, be compassionate and kind to, to your entrepreneurs. Um, and, and, um, so yeah, so I think the innovation takes time really stood out to me. How about back, back to you? Goodness. All right. I'm <laughs> going with progress, not perfection. Yeah. Yeah. That's I important. think that's, I think that was a theme throughout everything that I, I think that came across that people really do care and want to do better. Um, but, it, you know, kind of going on what you said, it just, it, it takes time and we don't want to wait, you know, so even if we can get a product to market that is, 50% PEU, for example, and 50% bio-based. I, I forget which panel it was, but we heard about how the, the recycling technology just isn't there. Yeah. And even if you have something that is recyclable or it is, you know, compostable, if it ends up in a landfill and it's under a whole bunch of trash and it's not getting the air it needs to decompose, it isn't going to decompose. So yeah. we have to think about end of life, but until we get there, um, even these blends are really important. And those companies that are at 50-50 aren't happy about being at 50-50. Right. Still going to keep pushing. Yeah, innovators never stop innovating. So, you know, they're, they're all going to keep pushing it along. And um, yeah, I think, you know, um, definitely the, the partnerships are critical, you know, whether it's with the brands or the investors. I think that's another, I'd, I'd say that's a key theme that I heard that I hope everybody will, will take, take away from the conferences, um, you know, definitely for, form your own little coalitions and work together and, and help, help, lift, help lift all this innovation up. But I think those are critical. Nobody can do this on their own. Very true. Um, <laughs> and I think everyone needs to work together on the, the performance, yes. the aesthetic, the cost. Like, I think sustainability, the improvement on environmental impact is almost a given. I know we need to, you know, stay on top of industry, but we can't go to market with something that's subpar. It yeah. needs to meet the performance metrics. It needs to be beautiful. And I think the market can accept a little bit of a higher cost in the beginning, but long term, it needs to be at price parity. Yeah. Yeah, there's a balance between innovation and reality. <laughs> so um, <laughs> ideas are great, that. 
Uh, but they don't, they don't, ideas don't, don't make the world a better place unless you can make them happen. So, um, and I think the, the last locations <laughs> balance between innovation and reality. <laughs> And I, but I think the, the the one thing that I heard the most, I think this will be my, my last um, my, my last theme that I really heard is that the disruption will happen. I think that there's no date doubts um, after the last two days that there's a huge tide of, of this this change happening, and um, it's it's cool for all you know. It's cool to be a part of the beginning the beginning or really I mean it's it's been around for for years, but it just feels like it's catching steam. Yeah. So. I think that's a good one to end on and awesome. it's going to happen and come, come to <laughs> us. Hopefully we can help throughout the process. And there were a lot of other yes. people here who are incredible, a lot of other wonderful nonprofits. Um, so I think there's, there's a lot of support for the industry and in, in moving this forward. So thank you wonderful. so much. Again, All right, well, and um, I, you know, I want to take actually a minute and just thank you. Um, you, you put together an amazing conference. The MII team is just really really rocked this and you should be very proud so thank you for leading the charge and and growing in my eye into what it is you're you're you, you're awesome <laughs> well, you. you know what actually i thought about it but i think our i think our team's gonna get really upset with me if i try and call them on on stage but <laughs> next year next yes. year i'm gonna have everyone prepared and come up and and thank them too perfect okay perfect. well all right you, thanks everyone. everybody <laughs> thank you have a good evening Thank you.